We're good? Yep. All right, so uh, we're, we're gonna go over like our piston program, rod program, block program, girdle, and then kind of touch on like the next level. Uh, so I guess we'll start with the piston stuff. Uh, I haven't really seen anybody like openly talk about the differences between the RR and the Turbo R piston change, I guess, that they, they did in 2020. Um, I'd say the first thing to have a problem with in the X3 like engine department um, is like a piston problem. Like you'll crack a ring land. I mean, in the extreme cases I've seen, the wrist pins break. Um, I guess the next step is some, some people will like wear the rings out because they eat a lot of dirt or just debris. Um, so Can-Am did make a change in the 2020 RR to address a lot of those issues, which I think they did a pretty dang good job of, honestly. So this is a Turbo R with cracked ring lands. So, I mean, you could put the puzzle back together, right? So these would normally go in here. When you crack this, that piston ring that would normally be sealing the compression, the combustion from the crankcase is now compromised. So the, the pressure just goes right around the ring and just goes down into the bottom. So this is a Turbo R piston. Another issue that we see is, I mean, the engines have pretty small wrist pins. We run an 18 millimeter wrist pin. So you get a lot of like flex in the pin and the piston and a bunch of other things. So sometimes you could notice it'll just rip the piston right out of, like rip the structure out of the piston. So in the RR, you can see they made a lot more strength in this, this structure. Um, there's a lot of good things they did with this in all honesty, but uh, another thing they did was they dropped the ring package down further. So you can kind of see here in the light, the ring pack, the, the top ring actually sits right on this, this like flutter area. Um, that gets, I mean, that helps a lot with uh, cracking ring lands, moving the ring pack down. And when they did that, you can see they did have to cut the piston a little bit because you need the space for all the rings to fit. And then now the pin kind of slides through an area that wasn't relieved on a turbo R piston. So like structurally, when you look at this, um, you can tell that these are a lot stronger. So the RRs were actually pushing these factory engines um, in our 360 kit, which is gonna be released pretty soon, into that high 30 PSI range on our bigger turbos. So, um, and the only failure we've ever seen on a RR was a wrist pin broke. So that was another thing that we, like in our progression up to where we are now in our big stuff, uh, we've made changes to try to make that stuff better. So another big thing that can happen, I mean, I'm just gonna show you here. So the, the amount of room, so they, they kind of designed this piston on a slant. So there is less space on the top than there is on the bottom of like boss to boss clearance. So if this rod can move a lot, then you do take away some of the structure that that um, I guess the leverage on this pin that this rod has. The tighter that gets, the stronger it is. So on our piston stuff, um, I guess another quick thing to, to note. So you can kind of tell when you have a lot of wrist pin flex, it'll blow out the bottom of the bushing. So if you can catch your fingernail on the bottom of the bushing, but not on the top of the bushing. So there's like nothing here and then there's a lip there. And this isn't even that bad. We've seen it way worse than this. That's kind of getting to the point where that pin is flexing a lot. So we fight, we try our hardest to fight the pin flex and keep the piston structure good. So this is one of our custom pistons that we've designed. And um, this is actually a 20 millimeter pin one. So we're gonna move this over here but we've widened this rod out so that this is a much tighter fit in here. So you can see with an 18 millimeter pin, when we slide this all together, 
we have a little bit of room. And if you did the same thing with a stock rod, you can see how much wiggle we have. So these are things that we do to make the stuff stronger. Um, I mean, we've been playing with turbocharged stuff for a long time and we, we kind of know what happens first. So we, we did this and we still had some of that pin bushing getting blown out with our rod, which it, I think we're just, we were just at the limit. And I'm talking like north of 50 pounds of boost. So we found a limit of that pin would still flex and it would flex the piston. And we added a lot of strut width to try to prevent the piston from cracking. And then the next revision was we went up to a 20 millimeter wrist pin. So we went from this little 18 boy to a 20. So now we're getting into the point where we are starting to get a lot of strength and structure back into the piston. So we also redesigned the rod a bit. We did not, I mean, we're, when we're going up to make changes like this, let's just beef everything up. So our structure here is huge. We, we made it actually wider everywhere. And as you can see, this is the piston that goes in our V3 engines. Um, this stuff is like super, super strong. So we have, uh, we've been, you know, running this piston for a while, but we've also switched over to using this custom piston with a more of like a full round skirt for even more strength. Um, it's still a 20 millimeter pin. <clears throat> I mean, it basically uses the same wrist pin in, in each of these designs. Um, this one offers more strength because we have this extra skirt on the bottom to add a bunch of structure to it. The, the, the hardest part about it is when we add all of this weight and adding strength, we needed crankshafts to, that we could either add heavy metal or make the crank heavy enough that we can balance the set, setup in. So uh, Brian Crower of BC um, is making us custom cranks. So we have a stock stroke, which is what we currently run now. And then we have a stroker. So that is, that is the really cool part about um, having crankshaft options now is it makes it easier to run a really heavy combination like this. So basically, you know, we're, we have our V1 build, which is most of the time guys either, you know, cracked a ring land, they had a piston problem, they're looking for a simple rebuild. We'll use a CP piston with a stock rod. These people are gonna be running probably somewhere under 40 pounds of boost. The next step up is the V2, which we addressed some of the pin issues with it. We can, this, this piston rod combination is light enough that we can still use a factory crankshaft. So the V2s are gonna stay in that non-stroker category. And then we go up to the V3 with our really big pin 20 millimeter setup. I mean, we could definitely do uh, a V2, which would just be a sleeved combination, non-billet girdle, um, with a billet crank if people wanna do that. That's what we've pushed for a long time. But some of the issues we had were, and I didn't grab a factory girdle. All right, we're gonna go over the head stud stuff too. So we didn't really talk about it, but we're gonna talk about it now. So the factory head bolt is a torque to yield bolt, one time use. You use these once, you throw them in the trash. Um, this is the nine millimeter ARP custom age 625. This is the baddest stud you can put basically in a factory configuration. Um, custom age stuff has, has kind of gotten really popular in the last couple of years just because of the material and the, the torque that you can actually put on the stud. Um, as you can see though, our 11 millimeter stuff is quite a bit bigger. The uh, 11 millimeter material that we use is used because we don't want to crack the blocks. We can only put so much stress in the block before we have an issue. So this stud is, is a good stud to kind of max out the factory diameter 
and then we found this stud is the best stud to max out basically the clamp load all together. So, you know, we, this is the stud that we're using 60 plus pounds of boost, um, you know, like that six to 700 horsepower range and trying to keep this block from, you know, <laughs> pulling apart basically. You will just lift the studs off the block. You'll crack that hole. Generally, we, you know, when we do have issues, we, we crack this side of the block. These bore structures are kind of just hanging out in space. The ones on the other side are, are a bit more, got a lot, a lot more structure around them. So our billet block stuff is gonna solve all those issues so guys can actually reliably make that five, 600 horsepower stuff um, and, and hopefully dune them. So we're gonna be testing all of that, but yeah, we just wanted to go over the stud stuff real quick. The, all this stuff is available. The 11 millimeter stuff is a very um, technical and tends to be difficult for people to do this conversion successfully. Um, so for most of the people that wanna do just like a V1 setup, like this stud right here is, is the way to go. We also have an ARP 2000 that is a bit less expensive, um, but all those are gonna be listed on our website if they're not already. So the custom made 625 is the best material that we can basically get for a nine millimeter. The ARP 2000 is a better uh, bolt than the factory one if you torque it properly. Um, so yeah, the, the, you'll see these on the website. Um, I guess we're gonna go to the V2 engine. So normally what you'd be getting this piston rod combination, factory crankshaft, and the, the next weakness to the block really is the bore. So um, when you run, like the cracked sleeves can happen, you know, at earlier boost levels, but generally somewhere north of, I mean, guys have no doubt ran a lot of boost with a factory sleeve, but if you have anything that happens, like any detonation or, or something goofy, you can crack a sleeve. Block is basically non-usable in that current state. So there's a lot of other advantages, um, head gasket sealing, you know, bore integrity, things like that. So this was one of the first things we did. This is, we've been doing this for a while now, but um, we use a Darton sleeve. This is all done by Darton. Um, they do the 11 millimeter head stud conversion for us in the CNC. Um, this is a basically a WSRD custom sleeve. Like this was not available by anybody. Anybody that was getting them at the time is using a blank and then cutting it down into size. Um, this is basically what we ran um, all up all of last year. Uh, we were running basically an XR54 at 55 pounds of boost. Um, the car was making some really good power, but we started noticing some issues with other parts of the block. Um, <clears throat> the biggest issue started happening in the bottom of the engine. So we started having some issues with the bearings wanting to rotate in the main housing bore. Um, we were having issues with studs loosening up or pulling the threads out. We we're having a lot of crazy stuff going on down here because it wasn't like structurally up to, to par. Um, some things that, that are in the girdle that are kind of, I don't know, I guess interesting is there's not a really a whole lot of strutting here to keep these mains from wanting to move around this way. A three cylinder engine in general does have a lot of side loading just by the way the engine rotates and the way the power comes in. Um, so we were having a lot of shaking in the center um, bearings on our girdles that we were running at really high power. Um, e you know, we were even moving into some main studs where we're running main studs. The next problem is all of these are hollow. So the bearing structure right behind the bearing that's taking all of that load and power, they're just hollow holes. So we've done some things to try to strengthen that up hard to say if it's that great or not um, so we basically the next step to add a lot of strength and structure to the block was to go to a billet girdle so now you can see we're fully tied mains 
this can accept uh, a 10 millimeter um, main uh, main stud, I guess. So if we do have issues with a block where the main the mains have had an issue with the threads, we can go up in size. Um, that's what my current engine's running is a 10 millimeter main and then 11 millimeter head stud. Uh, some other things that we did are, that are pretty neat. Uh, we integrated the oil pickup factory there's like some bosses and you slide in this plastic piece and that plastic piece is like kind of sealed in here um, the issue is if you make a lot of power and all that oil pulls off you can suck in air behind the bottom of the uh, the pickup so we just decided to make that a part of the girdle it's just a, a piece now Um, on the bottom side, it's basically like 100% strength. So this, this block has been, or this girdle has been machined to a block. So that's why there's molly all over the thing, but, um, just solid structure. All the oil paths are still there. Everything bolts on perfectly. It's, it's a really nice piece. This is made out of, uh, uh, 2024. It's. It's at least 40% harder material than the factory girdle. So all the power that gets transmitted in this, it's not gonna deform. It's gonna keep that block nice and strong. So this is the V3 version, and this is gonna be mated to the bottom of our billet block. So we've made some provisions to, there's gonna be some really cool stuff we'll go over. Hopefully we're planning on having that be released at the Sandsport show, so. We'll bring that out and then we're gonna run it um, in our car, obviously. And then at that point, I feel confident with any amount of boost, but we're gonna push it and see what happens. So this is actually, you know, basically an assembled V3. Um, this is a stroker setup. So, you know, we've done the whole nine. It's got the billet girdle on it. Um, we got this, the sleeves installed. This is a 20 over. 73 and a half millimeter stroke 961 cc engine so this thing's going to be rocking out pretty soon in a client's car but uh, i just kind of wanted to go over our engines like our engine packages and, and levels a lot of this stuff is actually going to go on the website i know a lot of people like to build their own engines and we want to supply them with the best parts they can get so this piston rod combo, the V2, we're gonna, we have the CPs on the shelf. We're also gonna release um, basically our own custom stock bore, stock pin, similar combustion chamber shape piston for the guys that wanna do just basic rebuilds with just a piston. So uh, I'm thinking that we're gonna have it on the website this week, which is the week after Sand Outlaws. This video should be posted in a day or two or whatever. So um, stay tuned for it. We got a lot of stuff on the shelves, so we can move some stuff out pretty quick. Thanks for watching.